celebrate to this new baby called Great Harvest Tabernacle International. Let me tell you before we open the description. Great things come in small package. Even God, when he wanted to visit this world, God had to wear a napkin. God had to wear a napkin to enter his own creation. Many missed God because they did not expect a creator to wear the napkins. God has a tendency of dealing with our mind and imaginations. We figure out we want great things to come with big clouds and noise. But God likes to work when people think it will not work. There's no visit of a man of God that is just for fun. I prayed just for me to be here. And whenever God says something to me, me and God, we don't work with numbers. We work with people. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm so glad since yesterday, so that when history is made, my name should appear. I was there. One politician said, so I see I was there. It's amazing and honor when you are part of the things that God is doing. More than four and a half decades that I have been traveling and preaching. I've seen, I've seen many things and great things, but I still respect a new thing that God is doing. Sure. Amen. Amen. And today I have my wife, Nema Muruti, the mother of Samira Lakhwalaya. She has accompanied me to come here. I don't know if I'm going to talk to you, but I'm going to talk to you for security. <laughs> So if you want to see Maruna, then I'll organize security set tight just to come and see because she's my only treasure. If I had two of them or three at least, so unfortunately, God has blessed me with many things. But when it comes to wife, one. And I also want to thank God for
I want to say before I open the scripture, because my scripture will be my message and my conclusion. This book I wrote it through during the COVID-19. Story behind the glory. It relates the things that happened the last uh, uh, close to 70 decades of my life. This one was written during the COVID-19. It was a movement during the COVID-19. This one, it was written during the COVID-19, the final hour, the going, the, the going church for the Kali Lord. A little bit of eschatology, knowing that we are people who are going somewhere. And uh, people were saying that, no, when, when technology takes over, we are not going to preach physically anymore. We are going digital. I said to them, if you go digital, Allow me to go digital with my wife and see if they will do it will work. Yeah. If my relationship with my wife can be digital, it can be digital with God. Yeah. I wrote the word a book called Evangelism in the Last Days. This book, as I'm talking now, is in the hands of many people in in in, 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 in what you call it DRC. DRC. I saw the photo. They were fighting for this book because it was also in French, English and French. And uh, this one, I wrote it because the people, they thought that we are not going to make it anymore. I said, no, we are people of fire. We don't just talk about fire to demons and say fire, 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 fire. But we are people of fire. No engine will move without fire inside the engine. And then... We, we thought that it was over with the church when many things are happening. The Lord said I must write this over the art of spiritual warfare. That I gave this, I wrote this book, is in English and Portuguese. And now it's also in Swahili. They read it even in the, in the, in the, in the, in the East, East Africa. They are reading this book. <coughs> Victorious Lord, the triumphant church and the conquering, the conquering enemy. It will set you free and your mind free. And I also wrote this one, which is reverse evangelism. It shows how much the church has been working. Nowadays, evangelism it is in cycle. We preach to them, they come inside, they lack something, they lack mentorship and shepherd, and then they go through another door, they go to the world, and we go and get them back into the church. We walk in cycle. Our evangelism is reversed, but we are correcting all those things that God has laid upon my heart. And God was saying to me that what makes people to die spiritually is because sometimes we like we like the minutes from the meeting. But God said we are not people who wait for the minutes. We are the people who know the agenda. What makes me not to be scared many times is that I seek the agenda of God for nations. What is that God is doing in South Africa? I don't look at a TV. A TV is a second-hand information. In this book, you will read about God's prophetic agenda for nations of the world. Go and get this book because you can't get them anywhere. You just get them. And uh, bless yourself, bless yourself with this. Do we have that beautiful? Fedi, that cover. Tony, say, Fedi. Tony, say, Fedi. Just want to give my two beloved.
with me to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Chapter number three. I just want to say one small thing and then that will be my message. Is there any keyboard to make me to preach quickly? Just give me some micro I want you to listen very carefully when I read. You know, I don't know, I feel such a well, wonderful presence of God. Amen. I feel relaxed in the spirit. Amen. And I know when I feel like this, God is going to do something. Amen. The church was just born in the upper room. Pentecost has just come in the upper room. There was fire upon each and every one, but from one from one room from, from one room to every living room in the world. The church was being prepared to infiltrate the world. In such a great mission, God trusted 120 people who are not coming from so much a great history or background to lock them in that upper room and tell them that what you are waiting for it will surely come after a few days there is power in waiting and let me tell you young people there is no danger in waiting they were waiting in the upper room they didn't know because they had no glimpse of what God was about to do. Glory to God. Amen. But they were, it has been revealed by the Holy Spirit that in their waiting, there's a phenomenon that was about to happen, which was going to change the human calendar, changing the human clock. Since that time, the world was never the same. When a miracle of God, the Holy Spirit, visited this world. I'm just making a background that when that Holy Spirit come, came, it was a day of Pentecost. In that book of mine, you read the feast of the Jewish and how those feasts prophesy seasons of the church. Everything that has takes place in the world, it has been prophesied through the feast of Jewish. The day of Pentecost was not for the first time. Some people who came to Pentecost were coming to sell chickens, do business as usual, meeting with their colleagues. They never realized something significant was about to take place on the planet Earth. And God was timing the feast called Pentecost. And I will show up when the whole world is represented in that little gathering of 120. It was a fulfillment of Joel who said, in those days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And all flesh gathered together, Africa, Asia, Europe, and every known world was represented in that meeting. When the Holy Spirit come, came to Peter's mouth was just to explain the fact. Because all the people were asking just one question. What is that question of Israel in the desert? For it is interpreted the same way. What is this? When they saw the Holy Spirit comes with the power, people began to speak in tongues.
hands. And Peter's preaching was just to say, this is that. I believe God is generous raising the apostolic people who will explain phenomena, spontaneous things that are not planned in our plans. You and I maybe will be spared by God to be alive today to explain things that cannot be explained by this generation of today. Just to say this is that which was spoken. It's not an accident. It has been known in heaven. Now after Peter explained, many people were saved in that message of explanation, explanation of things that happened. But what is amazing again is that in chapter number three, where we are going to read today, there had to be a question again. Because something has happened in that afternoon. Sure. The afternoon in the same place where Jesus used to pass. But he never did anything to the man who was sitting. It read as follows one. Now Peter. Now Peter and John went up together, together to the temple at the hour of prayer, which is the ninth hour. I want you to mark the words. Now. It means that it continued to, to, number, to chapter 2. After a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the writer continued and say, in, especially if you read and, and New King James Version, it says now. It is a continuation of chapter 2. Peter and John went up together to the temple and checked the hour so that we shouldn't miss the hour of God in our life. It was the hour of prayer. They chose that God always does things during the hour of prayer. The Bible is filled with these words when prayer has been done. Solomon, when he had prayed, the fire came down. When the disciples have prayed, the place was shaken. When Daniel has prayed, Gabriel came. And he said, I have come for your words. It was the hour of prayer. Let's go for a little bit. I'm just giving you a free talk. It was the hour of prayer. If you want to see God coming and doing new things, amazing things in your life, there must be an hour that is dedicated to God himself. Each and every one of us must have our hour of prayer. Yes, it is during the hour of prayer where revival is born. Because in chapter 3, it takes from chapter 2. It moves during the church age to the end. Where God will be moving by his spirit until today and to the end. A certain man lay certain man Bible doesn't want to tell us his name is a certain man you can put any name that you want there for a certain man and this man is known more by the condition not his name it's so touching when you are known by your by your situation he was lame paralyzed. He was a paraplegic. For 40 years, remember, 40 years represent human life. I hear in South Africa they give you, they sentence you to two life sentences. 
I'm asking myself, after you are given a life sentence, what will the second one mean to you? So if you have never asked yourself, don't ask me, ask the people who are lawyers here. Because they are very loyal. But I think 40 years, it's like a human life, it's like covering a, a generation. Four years. Now this man lame for four years. Lame meaning he couldn't help himself. The whole body could not function. Slay. He was a burden to somebody. Because all his life somebody had to be there to take him to the next step of his life. He couldn't do, he couldn't help himself. He couldn't do any job, he couldn't, he couldn't even think for himself. And all the people who came to the church, they look at him, he was just an object of charity. He's just somebody to make a donation and somebody to <coughs> say a word or to drop something to him. That's how he lived the rest of his life. Again, what is amazing me is the problem of this man was not a problem that happened at the workplace. Yeah. It is something that happened from the mother's womb. Sure. The problem from the womb to the world, to the tomb. It's so painful when you have a problem that is from the womb. Because you've got to ask somebody who carries you what happened. Sometimes you don't have him anymore. If you want to ask me why I'm, I have this nose, maybe this big flat nose, go and ask my mother. If you want to know why my, my hair is like this, go and ask my mother. This man was paralyzed from womb. And I believe today that when God takes the next level of our life, yes, he comes to perform a miracle with something that happened from the womb. That's how deep a miracle can go. Change how the womb performed you. Change how you were shaped in the mother's womb. Because God was there when you were shaped in the mother's womb. If God can pass the things that people have done to you, your neighbor gossiping, those are problems. People don't like you. People ignore you. People despising you. Those are things that are done by people here on earth. They can be punished for what happened. But this situation, there's nobody to blame. He became lame, lame from the womb. You can't blame the world. You can't blame a demon from Free State or a demon from Bumalala. He was born late. When the world received him, received him with lameness. And this man with the lameness, he went to the church, the temple. In the temple, there was a gate. And the gate of the temple was called It's amazing that he chose gate called beautiful with lateness, with a life that was sour, with a life that was low. He was unfortunate. He was he was miserable. He did not have anybody taking care of him. I believe in the people who brought him 
into the temple were tired of him. I believe in the people who helped him 40, uh, 39 years ago. They were now tired of doing the same thing to somebody who does not even try to do something. He is lame. But strategically, God should go and choose a gateway to stand. Because there are many gates where people have stuck in this world. In the temple, there was a horse gate. There was a sheep gate. There was a rubbish dump gate. There were many gates when you come to the temple. It was up to you to choose which kind of a gate you want to spend your life. The other one was dark, dark, dark gate. And in that gate, there was a place called Hinnom's Ferry. Hinnom's Ferry was a place where they throw away many deadly bodies. And that Hinnom body, the Hinnom Ferry, they used to light a fire to burn these animals, dogs that have been thrown there. The fire day, Jesus was saying to the disciples, you see that fire? It represents the fire of hell. All the people who don't receive Christ will be thrown into that fire. Jesus was illustrating through the, the, that hidden, hidden family. But let me tell you, but this man who is lame, he chose, I don't know whether it's him who chose, who chose, but he chose a beautiful gate, a gate called beauty. I might not be right, but I, cho I can choose. I can choose my place, yeah. which will change my life tomorrow. Yeah. Some of the things are not meant for this season. Yeah. Don't throw it away because it is not yet its season. Mm -hmm. Wait patiently. You will see at the right time everything will blossom in your life. One of the things that really touched me in this scripture. It's that we hear the story of Pete, John, and oh, John and who? John and Ananias. Not John and Jacob. John and Peter. First time you hear about two disciples. During the hour of prayer, coming through the gate called Bill. And my question is Jesus lived in this world for 33 years, yeah. approximately. Now, my question is had Jesus never went through that door? He had one time. Why he didn't heal the man? It was not the hour. There are things that God will spare for not for next generation. Don't worry when somebody rush in front of you and take his miracle and think that God has forgotten. Miracles goes with divine timing. You know God can spare you for the last three years of your life. And you do something that the world cannot contain. Sure. You remember Jesus stood in this world, not known for 30 years, but what he did in three years, we cannot contain even the books that are written about. Yeah. Even theologians, they have just done one word and they became become doctors. Philosophy, the philosophy of interpretation, measured with a verse of Alam's giving or a lame man. There are people who are doctors, this they only did their thesis on the lame man, on the blind man. That's how deep is God. That's how powerful is our God. Jesus did not come to heal the man. But Jesus knew that the miracle of the man must announce the season. The miracle of the man was an announcement of a certain season of life. Go with me a little bit. Trust me, I did not 
say to the people, look at me. I was a little I was a little Then we preach that gospel anymore. Look at us. I'm not afraid to say that in front of Peter. Peter, look at us. I think God is raising a generation of people who are not going to be afraid to say, look at us. Look at me. I was a sinner, look at me. I was born blind, look at me. Look what the Lord has done in my life. I was born with a condition, but I say, look at us. Look at me. God has done something in me that I never thought he can do. I was told when I was born that I will never walk. I was told when I was born that the problem is rooted in my mother's birth. Maybe something happened in the womb that caused me to be born like this. But I refuse to stay and say I will die in this situation. I know that even when Jesus did not see me sitting here, but the seventh of the same Jesus, fire and baptism of the Holy Spirit upon them. One afternoon, my miracle is going to happen. One afternoon, I shall rise up. One afternoon, I walk with other people. One afternoon, my miracle will come. That's your neighbor say, neighbor. One afternoon, I shall arise. It takes one thing to change for the four years. One hour. Just one hour to change for the years. Reabakasha. One hour to change for the years of misfortune. One year. One hour to change a situation, a terrible case, if you may call it a case. One hour in the afternoon was enough to change somebody's life. Oh my God. Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, He said, rise up. Amen. And that's enough. Amen. A human being said to a human being, this is not silver and gold, but yeah. yeah. this is a name. Amen. Rise up and walk. Peter had the rising and the walking together. Many they rise, but they don't do the walking. Some they rise, they walk for three years, and they sit down. Peter said, this hour is meant for you to rise up and walk. You walk to your house, no. Others were, to them it was said, take your bed and go to your house, but not to this one. This one, it was rise up and walk with us. Take my hands and walk with me. Don't, don't, don't sing, don't sing. Take my hands and walk with me. Okay. Don't forget to sing. Yeah, no, 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 but when I rise up and walk, he was not restricted. Yes. His walking has no restrictions. Walk! If you like, walk with us now and enter into the temple and begin to worship God after 40 years of the tears that you shed. It's your time to get into the temple and raise your hand.
this generation, God is raising people to say, Rise up and walk. Rise up from your spiritual lameness. There's a place in the presence of God. There's a place in the presence of God. I asked you the question if you were not here last night. Why God created us? Why God created you? Created you? To dance. Some say, David danced before the Lord and glorified the Lord. Mika looked through the window and criticized the king. She did not I, we are not created to dance. God has created us to be with Him. When everything has been done, God wants to say, finally, I tabernacle in my people. The book of Revelation, behold, the tabernacle of God has come upon His people. Jesus shall be the light in that city. God shall dwell in that city. It's not a city with bricks and mortar. It is the people of God who become the tabernacle. That has been done according to the plan that he saw on the mountain. We are preparing God to dwell among us as the people. Very soon and very soon, the Lord shall descend from the sky to dwell among his people. We call it a great group of revival. We call it a great time of harvest. Great harvest. We don't talk about harvest of two purple, two purples and mangoes. We talk about harvest, which is a great harvest that is coming upon the face of the earth. That harvest, God will be separating the people he can tabernacle upon them and the people who chose not to be the city of God. It's about to happen. You've got to expect it. When Peter stood up, when the layman stood up, Peter said, I've not finished my job yet. He stretched the hands like this. He said, I give you the human hands. Hold my hands and we walk together. I want you to hear me how I praise the Lord. I want you to hear me when I dance before the Lord. I want you to hear me when I say praise the Lord in the presence of God. I want you to see what is happening when we enter into the room with the Holy Spirit. We are tired of this thing of sitting at the gate, not entering into the presence. Some are sitting on the window. Like the man who listened to Peter, to Paul. For the whole night he was slumbering on the window. Until he died in the middle, in the middle of preaching. And Paul stopped the preaching. He raised him. And when they came back, he said, don't sit in the window. You'll hear half of what I'm saying. Yeah. Sit inside the church. God is saying, come to the church. Come to the kingdom of God. Come to the presence of God. Let us sit in the presence of God. I don't want you to go with half truth. Let's get inside where God is. Let's get to the place where God is talking. I say a nation is a nation because God has spoken. If God did not speak, we are not a nation. We are not the people. We were born from the word. The word became flesh. In our life, the word becomes flesh. Because the word in brood over our flesh. Brood over our flesh while we're still alive in this world. And we begin to stand up. No more talking about the lameness. Lameness is something that we cannot do anything about. But we can think about the God who's waiting us on the other side. And say, come. I don't have favorite children. Now when Peter 
The Bible says, when and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with him, walking, leaping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking. They praised God. What will bring glory to God in this world? It is not arising. It's walking.
without any any power, peace, purpose, receive. I don't, I don't even, when I, when I practice miracle, I don't scratch my head. I don't want to do even a necessary thing. I just pray for this, I just pray for my miracle. I just do it simple. That will shake it in the of Over I'm not doing it for any show. It is coming out of a compassion of somebody who loves. I, 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 but I'm talking to you, generation of people. What God is saying to you, I want to take you to the place La Itolagana And Itolagana be in the presence of God, where God is. The greatest thing that Peter did to the crippled man is to take him by his hands and say, I see La Itolagana. When they enter the room, a man was worshipping without being taught how to worship God. He was worshipping God because he was saying I was blind, but now I can see. I was this and this. Now I can walk. Praise be the name of the Lord. Almighty God, it's not silver and gold. It's by the grace of God that I am worthy today to walk with the Holy and to praise the Lord and glorify Him in the land of the living. I thought my life was going away. I thought I was the, at the end of the rope. But God knows the hour in the afternoon, the hour that was waiting for me, where somebody will come during the hour of prayer and say, get out of the place where you used to be. I've got a new place for your life. I've got a healing for you. I've got a that will change the name that you were called with. I have a name that I want to give you. You did not have a name. You were called a crippled man or a lame man. But from today, you will call become the worshiper of Jesus. For you have received the man, the miracle performer. the man was honey. People were not looking to Peter anymore. They were looking at a new man. Generation must keep it to another generation. The miracle of restoration, healing and restoration, is now. This miracle, actually it was a prophetic miracle where it shows where Israel was yeah. and where Israel is from there and forever. That Israel, you were laid. You were depending upon rules and regulations. Yeah. But I'm taking you out of religions, man-made religions, rules. But I'm setting you to the praise where you shall know me personally. Amen. Praise me and worship me the rest of my life. I'm taking you in the inner chamber where nobody's going to fetch prayers for you anymore. But you shall enter into the place of prayer. Your prayer will be answered. As the man walk, he didn't walk far from Peter. Some people, they fear to tell young ones the truth. They think they will lose. Many times, Paphonis, we fear to tell people truth because we think if we tell them truth, truth will lose. Tell them truth as it is. They will hang around your life the rest of their life. This man, though he felt the presence, but he was holding the man who was healed, held on Peter and John. And all the people ran together to the porch which is called Solomon's porch. The people were afraid because this man praised the Lord, this side holding on Peter and John. In other words, he was saying, it's not my power, it's not my mind, it is by the Spirit of the Lord that my mountain was removed. I was sitting in my lameness. I was sitting in a place 
place of discouragement. The two men who have the name of Jesus and the anointing upon them, they commanded to run and to walk with them. That's why everything, if anything, if I'm elevated, I will never forget them. Church, don't forget the people who make you. Some people, when they receive it, they forget those who made them. And they say, no, it's not them, it's God. No, God has never created alone. He said, let us. Even Jesus was made a pastor by John the Baptist. He's the one who lay it to me. Who are you? To say, I need God only. You need somebody next to you. Sometimes your miracle is in the pocket of somebody that you don't like. Yeah. You miss it because you don't like the person. Yeah. I never realized that I was talking to a person who will mark such a turn in my life until today. Thank you. In that book you will receive those stories, little stories. But those stories, they make sense if you are a man and woman of God. Because there's no glory without stories. Amen. Amen. Suddenly, now the focus was upon Peter. They wanted Peter to explain. And Peter said, Jesus Christ that made him well. Amen. But he said this words, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of God. And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before, whom the heaven must receive until time of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets until today. The significance of the miracle was is a lame man born lame with his condition that nobody can do anything about it. And this man went to position himself where believers or congregants would pass. Though he never received it that day, but he was strategically in a good position. That one day he will receive it. And when Peter and John passed him, they never saw a crippled man. They saw the time for restoration. They saw the time that must be proclaimed. Some of miracles were for who has been the proclamation of something. When the people were busy asking why things happened, Peter got an opportunity, like the opportunity of chapter 2, to tell them what is this. Amen. Now in chapter 3, he's telling them, repent and be converted, yeah. and your sins shall be blotted out. He will send his son to bring restoration. Jesus, Peter's first message was talking about restoration of all things. Restitution and restoration. This miracle is a signal that God is about to restore anything that the enemy has done in the lives of people. And I want to declare today I see the miracle, I see the glory, I see the power, I see the exciting time. But I am here to declare that there are some small gatherings which are meant for announcement. I'm announcing today to those who are watching me in the media, whatever the media you have, I'm here to make an announcement. I could have done this in my own church, but God did not choose that. 
but I'm here to make an announcement. This time, it's time. What are we going to do? 
to him. We're going to spend all our lives in his presence. Beholding his glory. His majesty. And when we sit in the glory, we lift up our hands. He says, when you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Why do we enter into this presence? We enter because you will draw all men into his presence. We come. We come because in him there's glory, there's anointing. I hear this. I declare again that this is the time of restoration. The healing of that man was not a healing because the man was not sick. But he was lame. He needed a miracle that would return him to the original formation. Something was not right in the womb. God was fixing the things that happened before you come to this world. He restored your joy. He restored everything that has happened. Today, in this house, there is restoration happening. God is saying restoration and revival to the midst of Somebody used to dream, dreaming a sun and a moon following him in the night. And every day when you wake up, you're so scared. Why the sun and the moon is following? I'm here to tell you why you see that vision. God is saying to you, my presence in this world, my eyes in this world, are looking for you to raise in this season. With power and anointing that will amaze people. I'm talking to you who's followed by a moon and a cloud. A moon and a sun. As you end, God is pointing his finger to some of you here. I'm going to raise you to be part of this revival that is happening today. I raise you. And when I raise you, I raise you to walk. I don't raise you to sit down. I raise you to walk. I raise you to take a battle to the next generation of people. You're going to walk and never be tired. You will pass this battle to your next generation. I hear God say, I'm releasing a generational anointing upon these people. They will run and never be tired. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I hear somebody say, Muruti. When I grew up in my house, my family hated me. Even my discipline, my brothers and sisters, they didn't like me. Some people thought maybe I am bewitched, but I'm telling you, you are not bewitched. There's something greater than them. There's something greater than them that God has put upon your life. last night, Something that is in you, it's great. It provoked the enemies. It catch the attention of demons. It makes the people to fear it. It's not you. But in 20 when it's too big. And suddenly, as I'm standing here, I saw, I see what comes out of the ground is like a dust. And this dust that is coming up, in the middle of that dust, I saw bays that are gray in color. They let them down. And I asked the Lord, what is this? The Lord said to me, this is a generation that I'm raising. It's a generation that I'm raising. 
this generation, they will have no the hour of God, the hours of God, hour of miracles. They will have the sense of what God is doing in their life. I see them arising. I see somebody like a girl. I see somebody like you. Like you. Anyway, he's just like you. I don't know. I see somebody like you. I said, Lord, she's a child. But the Lord said to me, don't. Don't. Don't say he's a child. Put your hand here. Put your hand here. I see a generation of your size. Men, they are, they are swifter than leopards. They are being raised. When dust comes, in the middle of that dust, gray birds, they land. And I saw you among those birds. Birds of revival. Going to be greater than the place where you 
Europe, Asia, Africa is waiting for the voice. Yes! Does it make sense what I'm saying? Are you saying that it's a lot of sense what I'm My father is a, is a pastor, he's been a pastor for the longest time of his life. He's about 90 years old. Um, when I was very young, What you are doing right now, you are just rehearsing. You are in a rehearsal house. When I compare your future and mine now, you are just in a rehearsal for the future. You are going to do things that you never imagined. They are greater than your imagination. She called the secret. But you are almost. Lord bless you.
has tried to destroy it, but mercy has rescued. And it is the purpose, for the purpose of winning. South Africa back to
you are behind with the visions that you are supposed to have achieved, but the Lord says, I will restore the years. Come on. Says, I will restore the years that the enemy, the Lord has stolen. So it is your night. If you are here, you say, my time has been tampered with. God says, I'm about to restore upon you the years that the Lord has stolen. It is your time now to claim what the enemy took away from your life. It is your time now to make claim of that time. The Lord says, I'm restoring that time back to your life. I want you to come running right here because your time is going to be restored. Oh my God, come on. Your time is about to be restored. In other words, if you are supposed to have achieved a particular goal and a particular vision and a certain time, but somehow the enemy can part with that time, that is the prophetic word tonight. Tomorrow about this time, whatever the devil looked for many years is coming back over your life in the name of Jesus Christ.
You are a prophetic company of people. You are an army that is released by the Lord to bring restoration of the order of the kingdom in the city of Pretoria. Therefore now tonight the mantle of the Lord is hanging over this house. You've got to catch that mantle. When our father, Prophet T.A. was standing here, he's not just standing here as a guest speaker. He is standing here as a mantle that God has raised in South Africa and the world. And tonight things were just released here. You've got to catch your own mantle. You've got to catch your own mantle and say, Lord, I'm not going out of this crusade the same. My life got to change. My gift is got to be set on fire. If there are intercessors, they must be awakened. If there are prophets, they must be stirred up. Your gift is must return. Come on, somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, pray that. Say, in the name of Jesus. Let the rivers of living waters within me. Hallelujah. Yes. 
But let me tell you, lift up your hands. Father, we just want to thank you that lives have changed today. God. I don't know how to let go of it. There's something, there's something, there's something. I feel my body cannot take the presence. I'm telling you, we are in the presence of angels. And anything is possible in this atmosphere. Father, in the name of Jesus, do it for somebody that they will know that you are here. That they will know that you are in this place. That they will know that you live. That they will know that you are God and besides you, there's none other. Father, bless them, oh God. Let them become a sign and a wonder. Wherever they go, may they represent heaven. Wherever they go, may the star of God shine upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak blessings. I speak abundance. I speak favor. I speak abundance. I speak elevation. I speak overflow. In the name of the Lord Jesus, blessings that you will not have room enough to stop is your worship. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it and I decree it. Out of your base shall flow rivers of oh my God. Some of you have had dreams and you thought it was done. You have had dreams that did not come to pass. I want to tell you, dream yet another dream. Dream again. Dream yet another dream. Dream again. Dream yet another dream. Your dream is valid before God. Your dream is valid. I said your dream is valid. That dream about the nations is valid. That dream about that big business is valid. That dream about that big ministry is valid. That dream is valid. Jesus' is mighty name. Father, do it for them. Keep them safe, oh God. Keep us safe, oh God. Satan, I want you to get your dirty hands off God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. They are untouchable. They are unstoppable. They are unbewitchable. They are unkillable. In the name of Jesus, longevity, you will not die before your time. You will not get into an accident. Sickness is not your portion. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Father, we bless you tonight. Thank you for this great ministry that you are raising in our city. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your servants, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for tonight, for your presence, for your glory in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the praise, the worship that was lifted to you that you received tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for Prophet Tierra In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for pouring into his life and using him tonight for speaking to our lives. We thank you, O oh God. We are full of gratitude for what you are doing, for the mentors that have fallen tonight. Thank you for the great grace that we have experienced tonight. We bless you, O oh God, even as we depart this place. May your presence go with us in the mighty name of Jesus. May your hand be upon us. Protect your people as they'll be driving in the mighty name of Jesus. May you release angels to take charge of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that is upon us today. In the name of Jesus, we honor you and bless you in Jesus' mighty name.